the mythological beast began to behave like a dog, pleading with her to give him an elixir. The beast assured her that once his injuries healed, he would accompany her to visit the expert. Xiaoying thought about it, and she consented, and after giving him the elixir, Xiaoying scolded him. He said he is a dignified spiritual beast, Jilin. Why are you acting so lowly? She asked, somewhat offended by his demeanor. The beast didn't care what she said as long as he got a royal grade herbal onion. While he was eating, the beast said that he was simply a distant cousin of the old Chilin, with no status, and that he was only able to open his meridians by chance. He informed her that's why he had to rely on her for existence, which made her think of him as contemptible. Xiaoyin was astonished and a little sad, realizing he had it tough, so she apologized, telling him she was mistaken and assuring him not to worry. The beast rose up and began running as quickly as he could, telling her that he'll be okay and thanking her for giving him an elixir, and all of his injuries were cured. Let's go, he said to her. He was ecstatic since he couldn't wait to meet and serve the expert. Xiaoying crawled onto his back and questioned, What's the hurry? The beast flew away, and Xiaoying informed him that after meeting the expert, he was unable to demonstrate his cultivation and could not speak human language. The beast agreed, knowing that he could not speak the human language. Xiaoyin informed him that he is no longer a Chilin but rather the Kola beast. The Kola beast reassured her that they would no longer be a Chilin, but merely Kola beast from now on. Xiaoyin smiled, wondering why the Kola beast felt more like a dog than Xiao Bai, to which I agree. Chan was still singing while playing the heavenly demon Qin, adding, Beautiful women are hard to come by. Chan observed the princess opening the door, and he asked Tianjin why she was here and if her injuries had healed. Tianjin thanked him for his assistance and informed him that her injuries had healed entirely. The princess became anxious as she told him she had come to ask him a question. Chan gave an uneasy smile, knowing that the song Past Love is about lovers. He began to worry, wondering whether she had gotten enamored with him, the attractive hero who had rescued her and was willing to offer her body. Chan placed the cup on the table and remarked, No wonder she thinks that way. Tianjin, the princess, was perplexed when she heard this. Chan lied, stating that the song's original vocalist is someone named Zhang Yuxing, and the song shows his love for his lost sister. He told her this because he was afraid that if she were found out, he would be killed. The princess who realized that, love, did not relate to male-female love but rather to sibling affection. A second later, the princess smiled gleefully and begged him to be her big brother, saying she had always wanted a big brother. Chan spit out the water that was on his mouth in shock. After wiping his lips and jaw, Chan informed Tianjin the princess that, although he likes her, being brother and sister is a serious matter that must be handled with caution. Tianjin agreed, saying she'd go home and inform her family about him and her being brothers and sisters, and that they'd absolutely back her choice. Chan was astonished even more and tried to stop her, but she didn't listen. Tianjin bid him goodbye and told him she was going home. Chan sighed as he chose to let go of this one, knowing it had nothing to do with her body. Chan began to notice something. When he looked back, he smelled something delicious and wondered whether someone was cooking. The empress was in the kitchen, humming to herself while cutting a carrot as swiftly as she could. Chan walked to the kitchen to check who was cooking, and he was surprised to discover the empress there, and he questioned why she had returned. The empress responded by saying that the previous time she had his meal, she had been thinking about it all day and night. Are you coming to accuse me of cooking without a hitch? She inquired, a little concerned about his reaction. Chan approached the meal and examined it, telling her that she was brilliant and lovely, and he informed her that it would be better to add, I like you even more. The empress reddened, unable to speak. Chan commended her, saying that her knife skills were excellent and that she was highly dexterous. He was astounded that she could still accomplish this kind of job. The empress answered by saying he's too kind. She then urged him to go ahead and told him that she will clean the courtyard herself. 
Chan became reflective. And he was perplexed, not understanding what the Empress was up to. He wondered whether she was role-playing, housework, or a masochist. While Chan and the Empress were conversing, Xiaowu heard the Empress shout. So good! Xiaowu wondered whether it wasn't time for her to return. She was unhappy when she thought they were performing dual cultivation. She began to walk around in panic, unsure whether she should go in or not. She was irritated because she knew that the male handbook had not prepared her for this kind of circumstance. If you're wondering what she's on about, it's the book that Yi Jinghong handed her on the last episode. She began to notice the door opening a few minutes later. And Xiaowu observed the Empress walking out of the door, quite pleased for unexplained reasons, and Xiaowu was stunned. Xiaowu saw her level up from the Saint King midstage, and she heard the Empress say and that she didn't expect Mr. Chan to be this good, she thought to herself that she will come next time, as she was very close to reaching the Saint King peak, and there was that glow. Not that kind, a glow that solidified that she was happy that she leveled up. Xiaowu was surprised as she hid behind the tree. According to what she seen and heard, she wondered whether Jiang Eihan was destined to be the ruler of Kowloon City, and why she had returned. Could it be that she purposefully manipulated the struggle in the southern area to drive me away? She asked herself. The emperor hummed to herself, unaware that Xiaowu was observing her from behind. Chan was pleased as well, and he thought to himself. That's amazing. Since he hadn't expected Jiang Eihan's skill to be this outstanding. To be able to receive from the Empress herself, TSK TSK, no regrets, he muttered as he enjoyed himself. Now, before I move on, I'll admit that I was duped as well. I almost thought that this time he really did dual cultivation, because from what he's saying and doing, you could tell that something happened, but... Not what you think. Once again, something else happened, but I was impressed enough that I almost misunderstood. Anyway, Xiaowu heard everything, and she misinterpreted what he said, which startled Chan Xiaowu wanted to weep, while Chan desired to explain what had occurred. But Xiaowu cut him off, saying she should have known when she first saw him and Jiang Eihan all the time. Chan said loudly, Wait, and this is not what you think. Xiaowu, on the other hand, did not listen and fled away weeping. Chan intervened, urging Xiaowu to wait. Chan yelled for her to let him explain, but Xiaowu didn't want to hear what he said and flew away with her power. A guy and a girl were traveling together when they heard someone weeping. The gentleman wondered how a woman's sobs could be heard in those desolate hills. The guy's name is Lu Xunhua, and the lady's name is Xiao Tao and Xiao Tao warned Xiunhua not to terrify her in that way again. When Xiunhua looked around, he witnessed something startling. When he saw Xiao sobbing, Xiunhua was taken aback and wondered how she could be such a beauty among those bleak hills. In wonder, he said, I'm in love! He approached her to attempt to captivate her, saying, Good evening, my lady. Xiunhua inquired as to why a woman like her crying while concealing her attractiveness. He went on to declare, I am the nobleman who goes against the wind, flying into peril from the heavens. He stated this, believing that his comments were having an effect. He was so sure of himself that he proceeded to urge her that if she saw any injustice, she should not hesitate to notify him because he could not bear injustice. Xiaowu merely stared, saying nothing. Xiaowu stopped sobbing and turned back, urging him not to waste his time and effort and that she would take her leave. Xiunhua simply stood there stunned, while Xiao Tao tried hard not to laugh. Xiunhua grasped her firmly, urging her to wait and introducing himself as a noble martial artist of the saint realm. And he informed her that no matter who is tormenting her, he would absolutely give him a lesson. When Xiunhua grabbed her hand, she became enraged and urged him to watch himself. When Chan saw this, he became enraged and rushed towards him to punch him in the face. And he did precisely that, punching him in the face, causing Xiunhua to cough up blood and being blown away by the punch. Chan's punch was so strong that he severely slammed into the tree, and Xiao Tao was alarmed. Xiunhua was in deep pain as he healed himself, 
knowing that he was in the saint realm, with eight exceptional meridians and five internal six empty organs broken by Chan. A Yin and Yen Seal formed as he was attempting to cure himself, and Xuan Hua saw a weird pattern on his chest, as well as the fact that his treatment was not working one bit. The identical Yin and Yen appeared in Chan's hands, signifying that. He was the one who did it, and when he questioned Xiaowu if he had done anything to her, Xiao would just flush seeing Chan defending her. Elder Zhang abruptly emerged, yelling at Xunhua and Xiao Tao for failing to pay respects to Master Chan Xunhua, and Xiao Tao were taken aback. Elder Zhang had them bow, informing them that they had yet to apologize to Chan and Xiaowu. Both Xunhua and Xiao Tao apologized to Chan for their errors. Chan inquired whether they were Elder Zhang's disciples. Elder Zhang agreed, assuring him that they had come to find him. He hoped he would forgive them, he expressed concern. Elder Zhang had intended to observe the play, but it turned out that the troublemakers were his own disciples. He pondered what he should do, because he needs to find answers. Chan was thoughtful, and he decided to give face and then forget about it. Chan informed Elder Zhang that he didn't need him to remain since his disciples were here for him. Chan requested that they return, and he softly gripped Xiaowu's hand. Chan assumed Elder Zhang was a reclusive master who would not be around to assist him with the winery's management, and it is preferable for him to be prudent and take the initiative. Elder Zhang was saddened when he heard Chan instruct him to go, and he assumed he was a speck of sand to master's eyes and it was all over for him. When they were gone, Xiaowu began to walk faster and yanked her hand away from him forcefully. And Xiaowu informed him that she witnessed the Empress emerge from his chamber in a disheveled gown. Chan waved his hands, assuring her that she had misunderstood, and that the Empress was only assisting him in the shower. He soon rectified himself, telling her that she was assisting him in washing his feet. Chan grew serious, and he told her that he will swear it if she didn't believe him. He began to speak, saying, I, Chan Fan, swear that if I ever do anything wrong to Xiaowu, I will be struck by a rumbling storm and die. Before he stopped, he convinced himself that it wasn't enough, so he proceeded to warn her that every time he conducts a fortunate draw, he won't win, and every time he strengthens his equipment, it would break. Xiaowu covered his mouth and told him not to say anything stupid. Of course I believe you. She responded as she approached him. She started to kiss him, and she was shocked that she did it, as was Chan Xiaowu flushed and questioned herself after realizing what she had done. Isn't this scene mentioned in the comforting male manual? She's bringing up the book once again, and she recalled that here is where she needed to act, and she attempted to remove his garments, but she was unsure which one she should remove. First, she inquired as to why it was not opening. Chan simply stood there trying not to chuckle at her. But Chan couldn't help himself and burst out laughing. Xiaowu was surprised that he was laughing at her, and she protested that she had never taken a guy's clothing off before. Chan informed her that he wants to take a lengthy vacation with everyone in Earth Village. That way, just the two of them, they could have some fun. In the city palace of Kowloon, the Empress informed the others that the eastern, southern, and northern regions, as you know, are now part of the Chan dynasty. You've all put in a lot of effort. I'd like to propose a toast. She exclaimed triumphantly. Qin Potion bowed and thanked Her Majesty, and he prayed that Her Majesty's success would continue and that she would win the central region. The other servant bowed as well, assuring her that they are ready for fight and willing to sacrifice themselves for Her Majesty. Her Majesty lifted her cup and said, Well done! And she determined that after the celebratory meal, they should immediately prepare the three armies. She informed them that she would be leaving this trip this time. But before anything could be done, Xiaowu teleported there, instructing Her Majesty to wait a moment. Her Majesty inquired as to why Xiaowu had come here. Xiaowu informed everyone that Master had said that this year's crop had exceeded expectations and that everyone should take a break in the meanwhile. Everyone said, What? In shock Xiaowu crossed her arms, signaling that she meant business, 
and informed Her Majesty that she needed to speak with her. Alone. With me? She inquired, her voice trembling. Sun Wufang was taken aback, wondering whether this was the Empress Consort's stern demeanor. A servant was shocked and said to think she had fully surprised Her Majesty. Inside, Qing Potion, the Patriarch, and Sun Wufang were all cheering for her, knowing she was finally going to put the Empress in her place. The Empress and were both served tea, and Her Majesty smiled, assuring her that since it was only the two of them, she could ask anything she wanted. Xiaowu didn't crack a smile. She was serious and assured her that she would be straightforward. She then asked Her Majesty if she was aware that she had committed a grave mistake. Xiaowu stated that Mr. Chan is pretending to be a regular person, wandering in the realm of mortals. But you chose to make a statue, don't you think people would see him as a helpless powerhouse? Have you ever considered it? She asked a little. Irritably. When the Empress heard that, all her confidence vanished, and she excused herself, telling her that she was only doing good for Master, and that this way, his legacy would go on for centuries. Foolish! Xiaowu said. She told her that if Chan really desired fame and money, why would he give her the position of governing the world? Her Majesty rose and hastened to issue an order. She demanded that the statue be destroyed immediately. Xiaowu halted her with her cultivation, telling her, Build it or demolish it. How would you describe Mr. Chan to the public? She asked. Xiaowu presented her a scroll and informed her that this is what Mr. Chan had requested her to give her. The remedy in this poem. You should probably understand, she said. Her majesty was stunned when she saw the poetry, and she began to read it, remarking that yesterday has gone, as has the flow of water, previous events, and sorrows. Weeping to remember the good old days of unprepared sailing down the adventurous river, she had a realization and told Xiaowu that she understood. Xiaoqi looked up, and she instantly realized that the calamity is here. She recalls Chan telling her that learning to embroider is a lengthy and difficult process. Only by enduring loneliness will you be able to make excellent stitching. Chan told her at that time. She remembered at that time she was irritated because she couldn't make decent needlework. She smiled thinking to herself that she couldn't break through the saint realm because she hadn't cultivated her heart. She recalled Chan telling her that if she didn't enjoy embroidery, they could always try something else. She remembered how she said on that day saying, No, brother, I want to learn. She stated it with determination in her eyes. A bolt of lightning reached her, but before it could strike her, she formed a barrier, declaring that a mere heavenly tribulation is nothing to her. She gave it the middle finger, urging the heavenly tribulation to continue. She insulted the heavenly tribulation, saying, Don't tell me you're only going to serve the appetizers. And she felt she had power over it, so she chuckled, claiming that the so-called heavenly affliction is nothing. A worker was astounded that an eight-year-old had broken through to the saint realm, another was astounded by how magnificent she is and yet another was even more astounded that Xiaoqi is playing with the heavenly tribulation. Even the heavenly tribulation was dumbfounded, but this time the heavenly tribulation had enough of this girl insulting him. It then utilized a more powerful technique, shattering Xiaoqi's barrier and blowing everyone else away along with Xiaoqi. The elder tree expressed concern, stating, Not good! The heavenly tribulation should not have been provoked. The elder tree is talking about Xiaoqi provoking the heavenly tribulation, and she really shouldn't. Have done that now that it's furious, the elder tree proceeded to inform them that a great disaster would soon descend upon the Shinwu continent. Thousands of meteor showers were unleashed by the heavenly tribulation to assault the Shinwu continent. Only if I did everything I could, Xiaoqi said in worry, knowing that she messed up. But before anybody could die, a great quantity of chi poured out of Chan's body, and becoming ancient warriors who would battle the heavenly tribulation to protect Chan who was resting soundly, and Xiaoqi was surprised and perplexed by how these entities were coming out of Chan's body. The ancient warriors all began to fight the meteor shower. The elder tree was astounded and startled, 
telling Shiochi that this was the sound of thunder, an ancient sound, and what? A tremendous, intimidating peace. Xiaoqi was astounded to witness her brother declare war on the heavens, and a mystery lady materialized from Chan's Qi, ready to strike. She attacked the heavenly tribulation as she stood in front of it. The heavenly tribulation gradually faded away, leaving the night blue sky once again. Xiaoqi was stunned, claiming it was difficult to believe that the heavenly law had been conquered. Master, how many surprises do you have that I'm not aware of? Xiaoqi reflected to herself. While all of this was going on, Chan was sleeping well and daydreaming about Xiaowu. Someone was wiping someone else's brow with a cold towel. And that person was Xiao Tao, who was assisting Xiuanhua with his injuries. And she told him, here's a cool towel as she wiped the sweat from his face. And she worriedly asked whether he felt anything. Xiuanhua sighed, knowing that he had treated the senior as an average person. Why not stab me with a knife as well, he grumbled. Oh, Chan had cursed him. Elder Zhang informed them that they couldn't run sand through an expert's eyes, and that he merely wanted him to live his life as if him were dead for the rest of his life. While he was speaking, he stared at Xunhua, knowing that he was the one who had him expelled out of the earth village, and Elder Zhang reflected to himself how unlucky he was. Xiao Tao defended her master, telling Elder Zhang that she knows how Xunhua acts, and that even when he acts badly, he always does it with care and respect. I felt agony simply speaking those words Elder Zhang was a little annoyed. That Xiao Tao is still asking for mercy. He informed her that she is usually too generous and nice. Is it true that only the strength of an emperor can break a curse in this world? Elder Zhang questioned if they can break through the expert's doubt pattern. He smiled and said, We'll go to the abyss. Chan reddened somewhat and said that this was his first time. And he requested that she be gentle Xiaowu agreed, assuring him not to worry and that he would not be too harsh. She then asked if she could begin. Xiaowu leaped in the pink flower with Chan, screaming the whole time, and Chan was amazed at how rapid the jump was. Of course, Xiaowu remained unconcerned, believing Chan was just acting, and Chan was even more surprised at how insane martial artists can be. Xiaowu inquired as to how it felt. Chan replied, telling her that it was amazing. He was having so much fun that he encouraged Xiaowu to go faster. And she did, but he screamed for her to slow down. And that he couldn't handle it any longer. While Chan was screaming the very suspicious words, Yi Jing Hong, Qin Potion, and Yin Shui heard what Chan said, and they were speechless. Yi Jing Hong smiled darkly wondering whether he should be delighted with Xiao Wu and Master's success. I feel like beating Master, he thought to himself. While Qin Potion looked at him, he saw Yi Jing Hong's dark smile. He raised his eyebrow but didn't say anything. Instead, Qin Potion tapped him on the shoulder to get his attention. When Yi Jing Hong glanced at Qin Potion, he questioned what they should do since they had gone on a honeymoon. Sun Wufang only listened in the background to what Yi Jing Hong was going to say and he answered that Master has granted them a vacation, but in fact he want us to slow down. Our development in order to understand the actual meaning of martial artist. At this point, I'm not surprised that Yi Jinghong misinterpreted what Chan stated about them heaving a day off. It even makes me laugh a little. Everyone rejoiced as Yi Jinghong informed them that before Master returns, they should go out and obtain better training instead of remaining on the Earth Village, and they were resolved to work even harder. Chan was amazed as he contemplated the mountain, encouraging her to look at it since it was so tall. And as he proceeded to remark that the angel of the sea makes it appear like a mirror, Xiaowu concurred, saying it's amazing. After all of that, Chan instructed Xiaowu that from now on, not to call him Mr. It seems like we aren't close, he said, suggesting a more familiar name with a smile. Oh, really? Xiaowu said, as she was happy with that. Before Chan could respond, Xiaowu kissed him on the cheek and offered. How about Xiao Fan? Chan smiled and told her that was a lovely name. She asked, Where do they go now? Chan suggested that they should go to a good restaurant to relax for a while. 
The pink flower began to spin as rapidly as it could, but Chan warned her not to be too intense since he was terrified of falling. In the hope. See building. Chan and Xiaowu walked inside the restaurant, both delighted. Chan requested a waiter to deliver their signature dishes. Coming right up, the two of you, please go upstairs for the private room, said a waiter. We'll get your dishes ready straight away, he stated. Chan and Xiaowu proceeded up the stairs, but Chan stopped to warn him to hurry since they were hungry. Several minutes. Later, the waiter arrived with the meal, and he counted the plates on the table, stating seven, eight, and telling them that all of the dishes were ready. Please enjoy, he urged. Chan said, don't mind if I do. And the waiter returned his stare with a dubious smile. Chan's eyes widened in horror as he realized how horrible this dish tasted. And he vomited out the meal, exclaiming, What the hell? Is this? Xiaowu's sweat dropped, and she smiled uncomfortably. Chan began to look at all of the food on the table and realized that all of the food here was rubbish, and he first spotted halcyon scallops. Isn't this simply scattered scallops with green onions? How can it be so inedible? He wondered. He was taken aback. He then saw a bowl of soup. Well, somewhat of a bowl of soup, and Chan was. Even more surprised when he saw that it was only a bowl of vegetable soup, and they dared to name it the white dragon soup to me, the color seems like water with uncooked veggies. He was appalled when he saw this and just exclaimed, Yuck! It seems to be trash. Chan grumbled even more, wondering how things could look so wonderful yet taste so bad compared to his own food. Xiaowu just smiled, thinking that Chen's expectations are much too high. Is there anybody in this world who can cook better than you? She wondered. Chan was furious because he couldn't stand it any longer, so Xiaowu stood up and told him it wasn't worth it and that they should go. She persisted in telling him not to be upset and that they could always go to another restaurant. However, Chan didn't want to listen. Knowing that this is unpleasant since this is their first date for his first vacation with his girlfriend, Xiaowu wasn't sure whether Chan was here for the experience or if he was here to solve the world's problems. Chan said angrily, Waiter Bio, please come here. The waiter informed Chan that he was on his way and would be a minute. With a cheerful smile, he continued to tell him that he would. Check the bill. Noble Shimin is the name of the man at the back of the waiter. And he observed something, or maybe someone. When he saw Xiaowu, he flushed and was in awe of her incredible beauty. The waiter informed him that the amount was 13,627 gold coins, and that he would round it down to 13,620 gold coins. Chan was so shocked that he demanded angrily. Is this a scam? He told the waiter to call the manager. Noble Shimin simply stood there staring at them. When Chan and the waitress were bickering, Noble Shimin was surprised to see a good-looking beauty with a moral, he described it as, like a flower being in cow's shit. Please be patient, dear client. Someone murmured something, and Chan was surprised to see him. The weird guy went on to inform him that their restaurant is just for martial artists, and that paying a simple 10,000, 20,000 gold coins for a meal isn't unusual. Wang Huan was the manager of Hope Sea Building. Chan shouted, What? He then asked Xiaowu whether this was a restaurant for martial artists, and she smiled telling him yes. Xiaowu was amused because they're in a relationship, and he's still acting naughty. Chan looked at her, little uncomfortable, but he said it, telling her he's a bit tight. Could she pay? He asked. Xiaowu smiled and said it's okay and she'll pay. Chan felt Ashamed and disappointed that this was a high-class restaurant and that he, as a mortal, couldn't enjoy it. The manager, Wan Huan, smirked arrogantly and questioned Chan whether he had enough money, and he told him as a mortal he isn't worthy of criticizing the cuisine at their dream sea building. Chan clenched his teeth in rage as did Xiu. Suddenly two golds crashed against his face, shocking him. Xiao Wu stepped in indicating she was the one who hurled the gold. So what if he's immortal? She questioned the foolish manager. 
In a rage, she reminded him that they are more than competent to criticize even if they have the money to do so. Moreover, my boyfriend is a thousand times better than your cooks. Of course, he's deserving of criticism, she reasoned. Charm was starstruck and delighted that Xiaowu referred to him as her boyfriend. The stupid manager clenched his teeth and told them that they were seeking for a battle. Two guards stood next to the stupid manager, and the foolish manager smiled arrogantly, telling them that they hadn't heard what type of place the Hope Sea building was, and they still dare come here. The manager directed the guards to bring those two. Before him, all of the guards consented since they were prepared to fight. However, before anything could happen noble Shiman, the fat guy, informed him. Hold on, Manager Wan, since they're so pretentious, how about we let them compete against our chefs? He proposed while stroking his mustache. The manager was taken aback by the presence of the owner, noble Shiman. The manager concurred, repeating what the owner had stated. So, does he accept? He said. Before allowing Xiaowu to react, he informed Chan that if he loses, he must chop off ten fingers to show respect. Xiaowu just told him that he would know who was the short-sighted pumpkin. Chan wanted to intervene, but it was too late. The manager smirked viciously and giggled, adding you will repent your hubris till death, he whispered ominously. Noble Shiman remained quiet, as if he was contemplating about something. He smiled darkly, thinking to himself that all he had to do was wait for him to get disposed, and that mortal lady would be his own. When the manager questioned whether she was willing to lose, Xiaowu answered, and Chan merely stared back and forth, panicked a little, reminding them that they were doing business and generating money. Don't be furious, Xiaowu. We're not going to be able to compete, he remarked. Xiaowu told him not to worry about competing against them, and Chan assumed that Xiaowu was planning to assist him in cheating. Noble Shimen had a smile on his face, believing that he was going to win, and he told himself that he'd make the girl wash him. And he decided to go change and wait for the girl to go. Chan finished frying his egg a few minutes later, and it looked great. And everyone thought the same thing, astounded at how amazing it is, and the other. Waiter was amazed that the fragrance had already reached his bones, and it's now reaching his soul. How was it possible? He wondered in astonishment. The manager hated to admit it, however he knew that it was their loss everyone bowed, and they said, Master of cooking, extraordinary skills, we, the Hope Sea building have admitted defeat. Chan warned them angrily that there are people beyond. People in a sky above the sky. Just remember not to underestimate ordinary people the next time, he stated angrily. When Chan finished speaking, everyone glanced around, wondering who was going to eat that egg. They all began fighting like ravenous hyenas, and the manager pulled the majority of them away, telling them that he was the manager and that they should not attempt to grab it in front of him. Waiter answered, I don't care, move aside. The egg belongs to me, someone yelled. But before they could do anything, the egg began to glow, and they were all shocked and perplexed as to what was going on. The egg suddenly burst, and everyone screamed in shock. Xiaowu's one finger was glowing, indicating that she was the one who caused the egg to burst, and she smiled to herself, thinking that this lowly life didn't deserve to taste Chan's cooking. After they finished, Xiaowu and Chan went, and when Xiaowu inquired where they should go next, Chan said that they should go somewhere else to eat. While this was going on, the waiter and manager were stunned and perplexed by what had just occurred. The manager had just now realized that the egg had exploded. Xiaowu consented, telling him she wasn't satisfied with the meal at the moment. Chan was relieved since he believed that no matter how amazing his cuisine was, he would never be able to outperform a martial artist, and he suspected that Xiaowu secretly helped him. And he said to himself, What more can I ask for with such a good life? When he stared forward, his expression became horrified, and he winced. Noble Shimin was standing in the middle of the streets, and Chan recognized him as the fatty from a while ago. Noble Shimon was perplexed, wondering what had occurred. Did the sea building fail to take the girl? He wondered. Then Xiaowu responded, saying she didn't know. 
Chan and Xiaowu instantly turned around, and Chan informed Xiaowu that his eyes were pained. Xiaowu just said, they should just pretend that they didn't see anything and they decided to leave. The fat person attempted to touch Xiaowu but was thwarted, and noble Ximin just proceeded to introduce himself, informing her that his name is Ximin Qinyun, but he told her that she may call him noble Ximin. He then asked what her name was, but she didn't respond since Chan saw what he was doing and became enraged at this guy. He stepped in front of Xiaowu and aggressively told the guy that he didn't care if he was a noble or an official. Get the hell away from us, he said angrily. Xiaowu was amazed that her boyfriend was protecting her, and she thought it was cool. A mortal dare speaks to me? He asked as he released a little amount of power in his two fingers. He threatened Chan with death if he didn't leave. Before anything could happen Noble Shimin's eyes bulged in shock as Xiaowu released her large amount of power. Chan didn't feel anything since he was enraged. Come on, do you want to fight? He yelled back at him. All of that confidence was gone, and the guy started to mumble gibberish as something horrible came out of his mouth, while Chan stood there perplexed and did nothing. Chan was still perplexed as he questioned Xiaowu why he was terrified, to which Xiaowu said, Don't mind him, he's probably mentally ill, let's leave. And they walked away, and the noble Ximin didn't anticipate the beauty to have such unfathomable power. He used another method to produce an energy bird, and he said to himself, Don't think I'd give up so easily. Noble Ximin instructed the bird to go find Master, and inform him that something had occurred that required his assistance. The bird flew away as quickly as it could. While that was happening Chan and Xiaowu didn't see the weird bird, and Chan informed Xiaowu that the Hope Sea building does not live up to its name, and he doesn't know whether there are any decent restaurants on Imperial Island. Xiaowu informed him that the cuisine at any restaurant, in her view, isn't as excellent as his cooking. Chan then proposed that they go on a picnic. Xiaowu agreed and said, Sure, let's get started. They didn't even see the bird soaring on top of them. In that some high Xiao building noble Ximin's master came, and he quickly questioned what the pressing situation was. Dai Xian is the celestial sect elder. Noble Ximin informed his lord that he had been humiliated by a mortal and could not take it. You were embarrassed by a mortal. What happened? Dai Xian inquired, somewhat perplexed. Noble Ximin revealed that he has a powerful female marshal. Artist next to him and that he lied through his teeth to his teacher, telling him that he is not much for him and that he bullies others. The old man was enraged because he trusted whatever noble Shimin stated, and he inquired as to their current whereabouts. They were inside, according to noble Shimin. He said, I just saw them go inside. Damn it. They had no right to disrespect the heavily sect. Young master. He was still agitated when he added, they're looking for trouble. Dai Xian informed Noble Ximin that they would murder the mortal while capturing the female martial artist alive. Noble Ximin was overjoyed to hear this. The service guy who was working there saw them and was taken aback. The service guy inquired whether they were seeking a room. The old man asked him whether he had seen anything, but before he could continue, he noticed aware the bucket of water. Dai Xian rushed towards the bucket of water and told him to hold on, and the service guy was so taken aback that he jumped back in shock. Dai Xian spoke with Noble Ximin via telepathy, and Noble Ximin was astounded that this was the spiritual grass, its rich aura greater than the heavily sexed spiritual springs. Hush! Be cautious not to reveal the value of this expensive liquid to this mortal, he warned via telepathy. Dai Xian inquired of the worker as to where he was carrying the bucket of water. The service guy answered, perplexed, that he was going to dump it out. Dai Xian gave him a gold coin and informed him that he needed this water and that this was money for the room and his tip. He then threatened him, warning him that if he told anybody, he would suffer the consequences. While they were going away, Dai Xian advised noble Ximin that they should drink the rare elixir as soon as possible and the service guy agreed. 
The worker was stunned and somewhat irritated as he pondered why martial artists had such strange tastes. Oh, I guess I get it now. I've seen that sort of water before. I believe it washes people's feet, and I just hope they don't do what I'm thinking right now. Dai Xian and Noble Ximin walked inside their chamber. Dai Xian was relieved since he had already consumed the strange liquid and was developing, and he informed Noble Ximin that he had never drank such a valuable liquid with such spiritual vitality in his whole life. This is quite refreshing. Noble Ximin didn't react as he gulped the strange beverage down like there was no future. Noble Ximin was pleased that his cultivation was improving. What's up with the weird taste? He inquired. Dai Xian said that the flavor didn't matter and that he should simply finish it. I need to use my cultivation increasing to take two more gulps, Dai Xian said. The next day, in the East Sea Islands, birds were flying going somewhere and a big ship was sailing in the sea. Chan started to tell a story to Xiaowu, saying it all started with a voyage. On the Titanic, the poor boy Jack and the rich lady. Rose fell in love at first sight. We were shown a scene in which Jack is painting a rich woman, and Chan continues to remark that Rose respects Jack's talent, and that Jack knows the loneliness that Rose feels deep inside her heart. They both overcame prejudice and family position and chose to be with one other once again, and we were shown a scene in which Jack and Rose were happy together. Unfortunately, when the Titanic collided with an iceberg concealed in the water and sank, Jack gave up his hopes of life to Rose and perished in the sea as we saw Rose grieving for Jack. With Jack's corpse ultimately fading down in the water, the pair of lovers finally brought life and death to an end. Chan smiled as he told Xiaowu about the Titanic story, and he asked her whether she thought. It was sad or beautiful. Xiaowu stood there, tears welling up in her eyes, saying nothing. Xiaowu immediately ran up to Chan and held him assuring him she wouldn't let him die. If I die, you will never die. She cried out. You silly, it's just a story, don't be too emotional. Chan embraced her back. Xiaowu advised him that they must stick together no matter what obstacles they encounter. He smiled and assured her that they would never be apart. The person who was witnessing all of this cleared his voice, but the pair didn't hear him and the guy noticed Xiaowu and was blown away by her beauty. Chan and Xiaowu performed the identical stance from the titanic narrative of Jack and Rose, and as they were doing so, Chan asked Xiaowu whether she remembered the words of Rose, and he told her to speak it aloud. And she said, Jack, our happiness has blossomed. The guy noticed what a beautiful stance this is and how amazing their composition was when they were performing it. When the man began to sketch, he told himself that his urge for creation was like a backward-flowing river. He declared it unstoppable. While he was creating art, he failed to see three people flying close. And those three individuals were unknown demons. And when a demon noticed the aura, he exclaimed to the others, What a terrifying aura! Was there such an expert among the East Sea Islands? He inquired of the others. The other one responded, telling him they were here to find the heavenly demon Chin and not to be sidetracked. But the second demon let his curiosity get the best of him, and he soared down towards the ship, asking the others what if they were also coming for the heavenly demon Chin. Do we still look for it while feeling at ease? He said. The other demon agreed with him, instructing him to be careful and hide his aura. Xiaowu recognized the demons and knew that they were in the same realm and that there were three of them. And she thought to herself, I understand. And an aura surrounded her palm. She mistook the iceberg for the three assassins, and she believed Chan was asking her to guard the ship, golden energy poured out of her palm, and all three demons died. Chan saw her pointing to the water and inquired as to why she was pointing to the sea. Did you see a big fish? he asked. Xiaowu froze and reacted uneasily, urging him to look at that shadow, and she wondered whether it was a fish school. The man cleared his voice to attract Xiaowu and Chan's attention, and when they did, he informed them that the two of them were so lovely being on the same boat, and it must have been destiny, 
and he gave them a sketch that he had personally done. Chan thanked the man, and then he had an idea. He proposed to her that he sketch a portrait of her. Xiaowu was pleased to hear this and agreed. The artist was upset as he clenched his teeth, angered that they weren't congratulating him, as if there was nothing unique about this artwork. The man was enraged. That uncaring behavior of those two. I'm a genius from an artistic family, and I'm famous worldwide. He thought angrily. Even the Qiling royal family wants a photo of me and wants to visit me, he thought fiercely as he tightened his fist. Chan didn't see the guy's furious expression and asked Xiaowu whether she had brought the pen, ink paper, and ink stone he had brought the previous time. Xiaowu replied, telling him that he did bring them here, and she brought them out, and as she did, the man was stunned, wondering what was going on and why he couldn't see the grade of those treasures. Chan began to sketch, and as soon as he began, a black cloud began to encircle Xiaowu, which surprised her. She doesn't comprehend why her surroundings have changed. Color, and she thought that her consciousness has followed inside Chan's artwork. Another Xiaowu appeared, and she said gazing at flowers in the mist and viewing the moon from the sea. The real Xiaowu turned around when she heard her voice from someone else. The Xiaowu clone went on to add that the spring and fall seasons were foggy and sunny. The clone Xiaowu then stared at Xiaowu. And Xiaowu was completely perplexed by what was going on. The clone Xiaowu bowed and informed the real Xiaowu that she is a clone produced by the master for her. Xiaowu was surprised that he had created a clone. The clone then revealed that she has inherited all of her abilities and will be controlled by her from now on, and that if she is in danger, she can take her fatal injuries for her to safeguard her. Master's Safety The clone began to change into a golden energy. She entirely transformed into a golden energy, but before she could go inside Xiaowu, she informed her new master that she would now withdraw and await her commands. Xiaowu was taken aback since she had not expected Chan to organize so much for her. She wanted to say something, but she was shocked by Chan yelling. Don't come at me! He was yelling like that because this man went insane as he was. Saying, God, you really are the god of art. Please accept me as your disciple. As the man was yelling this, he was clutching his trousers, and Chan yelled back. What the hell? Stop yanking on my pants. He stated this with shame. Xiaowu felt embarrassed as well, wondering what they were doing. Chan and Xiaowu returned to the Tsanghai Yishao structure. Chan smiled and remarked. I almost got exposed, and she's still laughing. As he held his belt or whatever was on his hip, Xiaowu laughed joyously, telling him that he was usually so serious and that he was incredibly attractive when he was embarrassed. Noble Shimon informed his master that it was them, to which his master said, Don't worry, leave it to me. There was a bucket of water inside the room. Dai Xian and Noble Shimon both began spying on them, leaving them stunned. Chan questioned Xiaowu inside the room whether they shouldn't allow the service man perform this type of thing. Xiaowu was already doing his feet when she said, What are you talking about? Of course, if it's to serve you, I'd do it. She stated this with a smile, and Chan blushed at that. Noble Shimin is enraged because Chan is having fun. Dai Xian turned to him and said, Are you jealous? When Dai Xian spied on them again, he saw the same water that the worker had, and he was stunned as his mouth fell in disbelief, and he began to realize that the bucket of water had converted into priceless liquid just a few days before. Is the same as the one that erupted from Chan's foot. Noble Shimon was shocked when he realized the water they drank the day before originated from Chan's foot, and a crimson aura encircled Noble Shimon's body. The same force began to envelop Dai Xian's body as well. While he was in anguish, he warned Noble Shimon that he needed to hurry up and occupy himself or else he would fall into a qi deviation. But Noble Shimon wasn't paying attention since he was spewing all that awful water. Before Dai Xian could react the red energy became violent, and Dai Xian said, Crap, even me, and both Noble Shimon and Dai Xian died right there. Chan inquired of Xiaowu whether there was anybody outside. 
Xiaowu advised Chan not to worry about them. Let's just keep washing your feet, she added with a knowing smile. In the central region demon cult headquarters the stupid demon slammed his fist on the table, and he shouted that. The sixth, seventh, and eighth elder I did even the ninth elder and the Zhuxian palace. Our hatred towards the Chan dynasty is absolutely irreconcilable, he said in anger. When the two other demons questioned what his instructions were, the foolish demon informed them that there was only one thing to do, kill. He stated, This dumb demon told the third, fourth, and fifth demons that they would lead a massive army divided into three, and that when they arrived at the boundary of the Chan dynasty, we would simply have to entice them, ensuring that they brought all of their Saint Realm martial artists. He stated, The dumb demon yelled loudly, warning everyone that when the Chan dynasty's main forces spent, they would slip back to Kowloon city and join them in surprise killing Jiang Aihan. All of the demons said, They understand. The next day at the eastern seashore city, Xiaowu escorted Chan to view his own statue, which he wasn't aware of, and he was astounded by its size. He was astounded that this was a man-made statue, and even more so because it soared into the clouds. Xiaowu smiled and informed Chan that he had already crossed the boundary into the Chan dynasty, and she told him that this is the Supreme Emperor statue and the emblem of the Chan dynasty. Xiaowu attempted to tell him, asking him if he didn't see parallels between himself and the Supreme Emperor. Chan started to realize that him and the statue have certain similarities, but as we all know, Chan once again misunderstood what Xiaowu was saying. And Xiaowu went on to say that the previous time he requested her to check on Jian Aihan the Empress, she had received some news. She informed him the owner of this statue is really Jian Aihan's late lover. She built the statue and requested the country to worship it every day in order to honor her late beloved's accomplishments, she claimed. And Chan pondered it, saying, Is that right? Jiang Aihan is truly a person of deep affection and righteousness. I can see that she truly loves the Supreme Emperor. No wonder she acts strange in the Earth Village, he stated. And he informed Xiaowu that whenever she sees him, she thinks of her late boyfriend. I'm curious what he'll do when he realizes he's the Supreme Emperor. A minute later, with a sly grin, Chan asked her whether she had ever been tempted by Empress Jiang Aihan. Xiaowu got jealous but she knew that was true, but she said nothing, and Chan caressed her nose, asking why she was jealous again. I'm simply a friend. How can I be persuaded, he said, his mischievous smile still on his face. Xiaowu smiled telling him that she believes him. She suggested to him that because he is interested in the Supreme Emperor, they should pay their respect. Chan consented, and Xiaowu flew down on her pink flower. As they flew down, she thought to herself, what type of lady wouldn't fall in love with Chan's terrifying cultivation strength? What kind of woman wouldn't fall in love with him, she asked herself. When they landed on the ground, Chan unknowingly powered the statue with his chi. It's usual for him to have three or four wives if he's willing, but right now, he's just interested in me. Xiaowu thought to herself. While she was thinking to herself, Chan was paying respect to his statue self, and Xiaowu continued to believe that as long as she had Chan's sincerity, even if he falls in love with others in the future, it's more than enough. Suddenly, she spotted something and glanced up, clenching her fist in rage as she saw something approaching them. That was the black cloud, and on top of it were hundreds of minor ranking demons with the dumb demon, and the stupid demon was shocked to sense the enormous energy, so he questioned the other demons what those mortals were doing. A low-ranking demon answered that they had been bowing, and the low-ranking demon informed him what he had witnessed, telling the foolish demon that it seemed as if they were paying their respects to the Supreme Emperor statue. The foolish demon isn't interested in such gibberish since he stated what a bullshit emperor. In his hand, a black energy emerged. He sent his dark energy upon the statue. Let's see how you handle protecting those ants, said the dumb demon. The earth began to tremble, and two members of the Chan dynasty were both startled and perplexed as to what was going on. The eyes of the statue blazed, 
ready to guard the Chan dynasty. And the statue employed an omega beam, not the identical omega beam, but you know what I mean. Anyway, the blast struck them all, and they all vanished, with many of them screaming as they died. The black cloud and demons faded, and... Xiaowu grinned, still astounded that Chan's visit endowed the monument with such spiritual strength. Whomever dares to violate the stone in the future would be punished, she smiled to herself. People were still shocked. Not understanding why the area was shaking, Chan told Xiaowu that he was finished. He said, Let's go. He then glanced at Xiaowu, perplexed as to why the statue had suddenly trembled. I thought it was an earthquake, he said to Xiaowu. And she just smiled, grabbing his hand, and she thought to herself as expected, acting clueless as ever she thought. That's all for now.